Hey guys, RJ here, aka The Balance Blue. Wanted to give you my match reactions from Chelsea's 1 0 loss against reigning Premier League champions Manchester City at Stamford Bridge. So, some key stats from the match were Manchester City enjoyed 12 shots to Chelsea's 8, enjoyed 3 shots on target to Chelsea's 2, enjoyed slightly more possession, 53 to 47%. So, it's overall uh, quite an even match in many respects, in which I thought. Chelsea were the more controlled team and the more likely in the first half, despite actually having less of an XG 0.2 to 0.32 respectively. But of course, did have Carney's late strike in the first half, did bounce back off the post. But overall, I thought for the first 45 minutes, the home side did enjoy the slightly better of the two teams without really conjuring up too many guilt edged chances apart from the chip we maker just mentioned but I thought City they did a good job to slowly grow into the match and they had that nice little sequence where they were able to find a pocket of space in between the lines which did fashion up chance for the dangerous Erling Haaland where he uncharacteristically blazed his shot over the bar but I actually thought as a Chelsea fan despite losing Raheem Sterling in the first two minutes Christian Pulisic in the first 20 minutes this was going to be a really one of those days where when it rains, it pours. And it was just going to be one of those situations where this was, could be quite a humbling defeat. But as it turns out, those that were available, particularly in that first half, really gave a good account of themselves. Um, a couple of players I wanted to highlight in particular were, I thought, Dennis Zakaria in that first opening, I thought gave quite um, a strong account for himself personally, both with his defensive contributions as well as his ability to progress the ball forward and to his teammates and really stifled Manchester City's attack at many times and, quite, and did quite well on the recovery. So it's on an individual level, I think he's found himself finding some positive form, which is good for not just himself, but for, for our team because that's been an area of the pitch that's been under an intense microscope. When I look at the lineup, I'm not too surprised based on those that were unavailable. So I obviously have the majestic Thiago Silva partnering with the experienced Koulibaly in the back. Captain Dave Azpilicueta in place of the electric yet highly unfortunate Reese James. Mark Kukurea, he had a bit of a mixed bag for me. So if anyone was in line for potential cutting, I thought he might be someone that might be a bit susceptible. And he did have a big performance at times, and obviously he was one person under the microscope for the goal. But then when I look at the midfield, we said Kovacic, I thought, had some really, really sharp and silky moments that you'd expect from someone of such of dribbling capability. But there were times I thought needed to be that little bit crisper with his final ball or final decision that was made. But overall, when he's on, you can just tell he belongs to be on the pitch with those other world-class players in the opposition. And I thought Kai Havertz, Hakim Ziyech, at times were looking to get involved and onto the ball in deeper positions, but just again, really lacked that killer touch when it, when it ultimately mattered. But for me, having those two early injuries just really changed the dynamic of the affair. But it was really great to see the youngster, Khan's Chikramaka, of course, come on. And we've seen a couple of cameo appearances from him now. And he doesn't appear to be overawed by the occasion. And, and I thought throughout the match, and I'd say particularly in the first half, although there were shades of it in the second half, where you saw the dynamism, his ability to dribble at pace and link up well with players like Kovacic in the midfield, but there are certain elements of his game that need refinement, which is what you expect from someone who doesn't get too much game time and is still quite young, where he had a few misplaced passes or he wasn't in tandem with his fellow teammates. But that's a function of time, and that will come the more games he plays, of course. In the second half, we did concede. It was a really nice work to goal from Manchester City, if we have to be calling it as it is. Some positive changes by Pep Guardiola, who had an immediate impact with Mares and Jack Reish, of course. And that speaks to the more broader point about Manchester City having that ability to call upon those talented players. Because as, as you see throughout the course of a season, the starting 11, while they might be dominant for a lot of matches, if they don't always work out for yourself, Pep 
needs to be able to rely upon his broader squad to be able to contribute. And even Nico Lewis, the young star, he had a, had a great cameo. And he's another one of those players that I'm hoping that resonate with our squad that they don't get overawed by the occasion and that when they're called upon, that they belong on the same pitch with the rest of their seasoned campaigners. But the goal itself was a really nice, well-worked move and involved actually Manchester City finding some space in the central areas to allow the likes of Kevin De Bruyne to run at the Chelsea defence and actually have a nice, nice layoff to Jack Reish, who first time deliciously cut the ball into the path of Riyad Mahrez and it was a nice, simple tap-in for him. But there was obviously a lot of disappointment with this goal. A, with the amount of time that City had to get the ball into those dangerous areas. B, the actual inability for us to get tighter on Jack Grealish to be able to allow him to execute that perfectly weighted pass. And C, really I would have thought and expected, having watched the goal multiple times now, Kepper to be more decisive with his actions. It looked like he was unsure about whether or not he was exposed at the near post and kept one leg half open. But also the weight of the pass, while it was pristine in terms of its accuracy, I do feel without being the expert, Kepa in hindsight should have made at least a play to try to cut out that ball. If he's not going to parry it to Thiago Silva who's there, he could, I thought, dived onto the ball and actually claimed it because the weight of the pass wasn't as hot and fizzled like the other De Bruyne pass later on where he actually cut it across and Harlan was inches away from doubling City's lead. So a really poor goal to concede upon upon um, reflection, but it is what it is. I don't want to be too harsh on Kepa because he's actually been quite good since being recalled back in. So... It's one of those ones where I'll have to take back to the drawing table and hope to not have a similar occurrence going forward. It just happened to be very decisive for this particular match. But then Conor Gallagher came on. We saw Amari Hutchison make a debut, and I thought he was quite solid. Like Nico Lewis, he didn't look overawed. He did look to try a few things. He did look to play with him, himself a little bit, which is expected being a debutant. But there were a few moments where he linked up nice with Aspi, with Conor Gallagher. He had that nice flick to have it who was offside. But overall, he didn't look like a fish out of water. And I'm hoping now that through circumstance of injuries, that the silver lining is that we get to see more of the likes of Amari Hutchinson be given an opportunity, particularly because our attack has and, and remains a point of concern for Chelsea. And that is something hopefully through the January transfer window we do continue to address. Obviously, we have made the purchase of Fafana up top, so that will be our watch this space. But Conor Gallagher injected a lot of energy. Sometimes he toes the line and needs to really make sure his discipline is on point because we have seen when he gets a little bit too excited, he can be actually become a liability and get himself sent off like he did against Leicester where we were fortunate enough to get away with the win. But I also thought Lewis Hall. Now, he's a player that's played at left back, but he actually is a midfielder by trade. And he was someone that, again, just looked like he belonged there. And yes, we were chasing the game, so it allowed him to get more space up the pitch. And it was very unfortunate for him that he was unable to convert that last gas chance in injury time. But he had some really, really positive moments, linked up well, showed some trickery, had some confidence. Because of his humble nature, I think it feels like he gets, he gets the commentary that He's someone that doesn't play with that confidence, but when you watch him, he does all the basics right. He's actually got a nice burst of pace. He's physical, and I like his silent confidence. So hopefully going forward, like Amari Hutchinson, like Chukwamaker, Graham Potter uses this transitional type period to really give these players a go because unfortunately our more experienced players, the ones that we'd expect to rely on for whatever reason, just aren't clicking and therefore... If there is a time to experiment, now is the time because, unfortunately, as difficult as it is to say, this does genuinely appear to be that transition season where we've come under the new ownership, got a new manager mid-season, had an acute set of injuries. And while injuries happen to every team, yes, that's absolutely spot on. Injuries happen to every team. Not an acute set of injuries happen at the same time. Sterling Pulisic's match. Mount yesterday. Reese James Benchill were already out. 
Loftus Cheek, who was already a backup midfielder and who was playing 90 minutes each week until he got his injury, also out. Mendy is a backup keeper. Him and Kepa are back and forth. He's not available to be called upon, so you don't know what the mindset of Potter for goalkeepers is. Wesley Fofana, our most expensive defender. We are not used to dealing with this amount of injuries, and I don't think it's fair or reasonable to expect that the same level of standard of performance can be maintained without such an experienced set of players that are absent. And I forgot if I mentioned Kante, of course. So that's another area where midfield really needs to be invested in this summer. But overall, obviously painful to see us languishing in 10th spot in the Premier League table. It's unacceptable. It is, um, it is painful to see us get going that part of the ladder, given what we've invested earlier in the season. But context is hugely important here. I don't, I'm not one in the camp to say Potter out. I do expect Potter, the coaching staff, the players to collectively be delivering better performances for us because we, we do expect improvements, especially in the style of play. But I am trying to be mild and balanced, as I like to call myself, balanced blue. So overall, disappointing result. It was 1-0. We've really done enough, in my opinion, to conjure up a point from this clash, but I wouldn't get too disheartened because I did see some positive signs overall. Let's hope for no more injuries, some positive interactions in the transfer window, and more importantly, just hopefully we get our and most of our complement back on the pitch because when we're all together, we all know the type of good football we can play. So until then, give me a follow in Chelsea at RJ underscore good things or follow me on Twitter at the Balance Blue. And until then, take care, all the best. Up the chills.